Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Rongchun Zhou. I'm a network hardware en engineer at Meta. Um, I'm honored today and very excited today to represent Meta's network MPI team to introduce our latest innovation, Meta's 51T Ethernet switch. As Omar um, announced yesterday at his keynote speaking, there are two major skills uh, at Meta's 51T switch. One is Minipack 3, and the other is Cisco's 8501. So Minipack 3 uh, is third generation of Meta's Minipack switch platform. Um, Minipack 3 is based on Broadcom's uh, Tomahawk 5 switch ASIC while Cisco's 8501 is based on Cisco's G200 ASIC. Both of these two SKUs uh, share a common architecture, a common set of features, and uh, I've also run on both of them. Uh, the major differences between these two SKUs are on the switch ASIC and, uh, and the detailed implement, uh, implementations. Meta's 51T switch features 64 OSIP ports, uh, delivering 128 of 400 gig Ethernet uh, non-blocking switching capacity. It's a fabulous design for the first time uh, in Minipack family. Uh, we are adding a QSIP28 management port this time, and uh, we are upgrading our CPU uh, daughter card to improve our processing power capability. The switch is equipped with Meta's 2x400 gig FR4 optics module. Uh, and we are introducing BMC Lite architecture for this generation and uh, introducing a P, uh, platform manager feature. Uh, both of them are innovations from Meta's FBOS team and the network hardware team uh, working together. Uh, and uh, lastly, I will talk about PSU agnostic design. Um, that, that is also introduced uh, in this generation. The system, um, oh, in the next few slides, I will focus on my introduction on Minipack 3, but many of these highlights features apply to Cisco's 8501 as well. Uh, the system form factor uh, remains the compact 4RU 19-inch form factor as its predecessors. Uh, the switch features um, um, a, a switch mainboard subchassis and also a supervisor control module. Both of them are rules accessible from the front of the chassis. And uh, on the rear side, there are seven plus one fan tray um, uh, redundancy accessible from the rear side of the chassis. And there are two PSUs, uh, two PSU slots. Uh, PSU options include uh, AC PSU in one plus one configuration and it uh, will also support a single DC PSU configuration. Uh, this is the front and the rear views of the Minipack 3. Uh, there are 64 OSIP ports on the front panel. Um, the OSIPs are in a two by one belly to belly layout. And we have 100, we, we, we designed 128 of tricolor LEDs for uh, all of the uh, uh, 400 gig Ethernet user ports. The SCM is in a horizontal orientation uh, in the bottom center area. The uh, SMB ejectors and the uh, safety release button are the hardware features to support the uh, SMB module insertion and then removal. And we are adding a QSIP28 port to connect to the switch A6 management port. The rear side of the chassis has, uh, as you can see, there are eight fan tree slots and two PSU slots. The switch mainboard is most a critical part of the whole system. Um, the, uh, it carries the switch ASIC in the center. Um, the QS, uh, sorry, the OSIP ports are connected to the ASIC through PCB routing, and we have a QSIP 28 management port are connected through a flywheel cable assembly. We developed an innovative solution to use Lattice Semis X03 and the ECP5 uh, devices as the OSIP low speed host controller. Um, the stack up information is listed here for reference. 
Um, overall, this uh, switch main board, SMB board, has a very simple interface to the rest of the system, allows us to enable any alternative SB uh, designs um, as needed. The supervisor control module, um, besides it's now horizontally oriented, we also made a few uh, changes. One is the uh, we upgraded the CPU data card from the previous generation's Sprawl DE CPU to today's uh, SLEC D CPU. The RAM BMC is reused from previous generation Mini Pack 2's RAM BMC. Uh, we keep using SBEAT ASD2620, uh, but we did bomb op uh, optimization uh, on the um, on the RAM BMC to make the operational efficiency even better. Oh, by the way, uh, RAM BMC on the previous generation was uh, was in the um, uh, SMB, but now we are moving the RAM BMC to the uh, SCM under the BMC Lite architecture. <laughs> Minipack 3's power rating is 3,000 watts. Um, the maximum power for Meta's typical use cases with FR4 optics is 2,100 watts. Um, we have achieved quite significant power savings, power, uh, improved uh, power uh, efficiency over the past five years um, with three generations of Minipack development. Meta's 2x400 giga FR4 optics modules have been qualified on Meta's uh, 51T switch platform. It's specifically tailored for Meta's application. Uh, it features two RC connections uh, on the connector. Uh, it has uh, it supports various of speed configuration, speed mode configurations to meet Meta's uh, data center requirement. The maximum power of this module is 16 watts. The idea of this BMC light architecture is to let BMC continue manage the most critical part of the uh, platform management, such as power on, sequence control, fail recovery, system event logging. Well, let the x86 CPU to manage the voltage regulator sensors, uh, former flash devices, and fan trees in the system with the help of uh, uh, IPGA and CPRD devices in the system. The LB IPGA uh, is a very critical part of under this BMC light architecture. Uh, we use AMD RT7 device for this row. We designed in uh, many S2 uh, uh, controllers, SPI controllers, GPIOs in this uh, LB IPGA to help CPU and BMC um, uh, execute some of the uh, platform management tasks. The platform manager uh, is an innovation from uh, a boss team and executed by a hardware team. Uh, the idea is to define IDE PROMs for each PC base that needs drivers. And these uh, addresses and the um, uh, locations of these IDE PROMs are indexed in the platform EPROM, uh, which is read by the AVOS software to create a map to retrieve this uh, IDE PROM information and then collect the BSP driver information and then load the drivers automatically. Um, so we define a standardized hardware interface and the TRV EPROM format uh, that allows automatic di discovery of these components. Um, so the result is greatly improve the software MPI efficiency and it allows uh, it's very flexible for hardware to implement any second source designs that require different drivers or uh, doing a respins. The objective of PSU agnostic design is to streamline the procurement process uh, so we can pre-build these units without, without the uh, specific PSU skills uh, being identified. So we can customize the PSU skills at the later stage of the manufacturing process our system design, regulatory uh, compliance, and the manufacturing process have been specifically tailored to support this, uh, to achieve this objective. Okay, now let's focus on uh, Cisco's 8501. The partnership between Meta and uh, Cisco 
uh, on the network equipment development started from batch 400C in 2021. At that time, our uh, partnership was on silicon only using Cisco Silicon One Q200 ASIC. At the 51T switch development, our partnership is to, uh, to develop a, a, a grid box together uh, using Cisco Silicon One G200 ASIC. Well, this time Cisco developed uh, the full system uh, inspired by uh, Minipack 3 OCP design. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Cisco 8501 share a common feature set uh, with Minipack 3. And Meta and Cisco had uh, joint architecture and design reviews to ensure 8501's features performance uh, meet Meta's uh, data center requirement. The early prototypes are now available uh, for 8501. Uh, the front view and rear view of Cisco's uh, uh, 8501 is showing here. You can see it's very similar to uh, the Minipack 3 that we saw earlier. This is the summary. Um, Meta's 51T uh, switch platform is a very high performance uh, switch, switch platform taking advantage of the latest switch ASICs from Broadcom and, uh, and Cisco and we are upgrading our CPU and adding many more uh, innovations in this generation's design. We're trying to make the system reliable and resilient. Um, and uh, during the MPI phase, the 51T design has proven itself to be operational uh, efficient, power efficient, and API, uh, MPI efficient. Minipack 3, Design uh, specs and the design packages have been submitted to OCP and accepted by OCP. Cisco 8501 is OCP uh, inspired uh, submission. So, uh, 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 this process is also completed with, OC, uh, with OCP. Minipack 3 is expected to be in mass production in Q1 2025. Additional information can be found uh, for Minipack 3 at Celestica's website and the Cisco 8501 information can be found at Cisco's website. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, I think I'm, I'm, all, I'm done here. <laughs> we have a few minutes for questions. If there are any, please walk up to the mics. Have either of these two have either of these two designs considered up the upgrade path to 800 gig? I know you have two by 400, but are they 800 gig capable? And then the follow-up question would be: Then does that need a new pluggable module? And can you accept in any kind of industry standard, or is it just a special one design? Sorry for all those questions, but um, certainly um, I think the uh, the. Uh, the ASIC devices support 800 gig operation. It just it's not needed by Meta Data Center yet. So eventually, when 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 we have such demand, this bus can be enabled for to support the hardware is able to support 800 gig application. Sorry, I didn't get the. Well, I was just curious. Uh, are, there's other two. There there are other two by 400s out there from a pluggable, or do you just have to buy the Meta? Right. Okay. Right, right, right. Certainly there are different form factors of uh, uh, OSIP modules that we can support. And you, you can be sure that uh, at Meta we are investigating these different options, but we are just not ready to uh, publish that result. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks. Yes. Do you plan to support the scheduled fabric with the 8501 or just non-scheduled? Scheduled fabric is, we have another platform to support it, DSF, that's announced yesterday. All right, thanks okay. a lot.